Hey y'all, welcome back to our kitchen. Today I have got two very easy one skillet dinners to share with y'all. That means the entire dinner is made in one pan. Easy cleanup, plus these are pretty quick recipes. This first one is a Tuscan chicken mac and cheese. I literally cannot wait, so let's go ahead and get started on it. Also, if I sound a little congested, it's because I am. We've had these beautiful warm days and I am loving it, but my allergies are like all over the place, so just ignore that. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and season up this chicken. I have some tenderloins here. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil, some smoked paprika, and then the blend to this, which is just salt, pepper, and garlic. And I wanted to mention, I'm using chicken tenderloin just cause those will be a lot easier to cook in this recipe. But you can use chicken breasts or boneless skinless chicken thighs. If you do the chicken breasts, kind of like pound them out so they're a little bit thinner. And that way they'll cook like more fast and evenly in your skillet. Okay, I've got my skillet on like a medium to medium high heat. I'm gonna add a little bit more oil and then we're just gonna cook this chicken all the way through. Okay, so once your chicken is finished cooking, just add it to a plate and set it aside. You can put some tin foil over it if you want to keep it warm. Okay, I'm trying to let my skillet cool down just a little bit, but we're gonna add in two tablespoons of butter. And then the recipe calls for one entire yellow onion, but I'm only gonna add in a little bit because y'all know. So I'm adding it in there, but not the full amount. We're gonna let that saute for just a few minutes. Okay, now that our onions are nice and soft and translucent, I'm just gonna use the jarred garlic because the recipe calls for six cloves, so it's a lot of garlic. So just to make it a little easier, I'm just gonna add in a ton. You think that's enough? Yeah. Like that amount. I'm gonna have that amount of garlic in here. Okay, we'll let that cook for just a minute. We don't want it to burn. And I'm gonna add in a third a cup of chicken broth. You can also use white wine. Um, I didn't have any, so I'm just gonna use chicken broth. Now we're just gonna let this simmer for about five minutes and kind of reduce down. I had to come down here and see what you got going on. It's looking good, isn't it? Yeah, the, the smell coming up the stairs, it's incredible. <laughs> and that chicken that you cooked looks very nice. It looks good, it's gonna be good. Nice color you got on there. You're shocked about the onion? I was a little surprised to see it in there, yeah, but yeah. you know. Only a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, um, You'll be able to work around that. But yes. Th at least it gets what I want in there and the flavor. Exactly. That's what I'm aiming for here. You get what you want, I can pick around it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're gonna add basically an entire jar of sun-dried tomatoes. Ours apparently froze in the refrigerator, so I think it's thawed now. Um, but you wanna add the entire jar minus like one to two tablespoons of the oil. Hopefully this is thawed enough that I can like <laughs> get it in there. Okay, there we go. I think we're gonna be good. And then we're gonna let these cook for at least two minutes. If you wanna do three or four, that's just gonna give it more flavor. Are you so excited, Monkey? Yeah, sun-dried tomatoes are one of my uh, favorite I would say, I believe this recipe items. has your name written all over it. It does. This is like speaking to my heart. Okay, just kind of let those simmer in there. Okay, now to our skillet, we're gonna add about three tablespoons of flour and then kind of let that flour cook out for a few minutes. I think that first one was like a heaping tablespoon. <laughs> so I'll try and do smaller ones. Okay, just kind of stir that around, let that flour cook out, and then we're gonna add two cups of chicken broth. Can you even believe this is gonna turn into mac and cheese? <laughs> I keep like forgetting like, oh, this is actually gonna be macaroni and cheese at the end of this. Then we're gonna add about two and a half to three cups of milk, or you can do like a half and half. There's two cups. Now to this, you can add some fresh herbs, and y'all know I love describing this at the grocery store. It's like over near the produce section, and it's just so easy to add this to dishes. It gives it flavor, it makes it pretty, all the things, very convenient. I wish they would go on sale more often. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do kind of like a big 
pinch of these in here and then we'll do a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. Okay, I kind of brought this to like a little simmer because I felt like it needed to be warmer. I had it down like super low. So now we're going to add in our elbow noodles and you want to do about three cups. And of course I'm eyeballing it. <laughs> and you just want to kind of stir this occasionally. Um, keep it on a simmer so those elbow noodles will cook. And you want to get them kind of like al dente and then you'll just like stir occasionally it'll take probably like about 10 minutes to get them cooked all the way through y'all look at this does that not look so delicious daisy thinks so too she's over here like howling at me but it's just like so creamy and beautiful i just tasted the macaroni noodles and they are like about perfect so now i'm just gonna add in like a big handful of spinach and by the way you want to do baby spinach but we'll just kind of like stir this until that spinach wilts and gets all nice and warm in there okay i took it off the heat we're gonna add in mozzarella and by the way, if this gets too thick, we have like a little bit extra milk we can add in there to get like the consistency that you want. Okay, next we're gonna add in cheddar cheese. And last but not least, some freshly grated Parmesan. Okay, I can already tell I want just a little bit more milk in here to make it a little creamier. So I'm gonna add a splash. Do you see this cheesiness? Oh my goodness, y'all. This is about to be amazing. Okay, chicken going back in. Okay, some fresh herbs on top to make it pretty. Wow, oh wow. That is a bowl full of goodness, I should say. <laughs> Add a little bit more parm on top. There's spinach in there. Oh, All the things. My. Do you see that cheesiness? Wow. This is dreamy, Bonk. Oh my goodness gracious, Bonk. Sure get some uh, spinach and roasted or sun dried tomato. Oh my gracious. The cheesiness how is much, crazy. How much cheese is in here? I don't think there is that much, honestly. I feel like I could put more. <laughs> Really? I made sure to get a little bit of everybody okay, good. in this bite. I love the flavor of the chicken. Like that smoked paprika is some of my favorite. Wow. I love the sun-dried tomato and spinach. Mm-hmm. And that chicken is so good. This is one I would certainly request we have again for sure. Mm. Got a little pasta in there, macaroni. This was so good. Yeah. This is very nice. Okay, popping in here to say the biggest thank you to Hungry Root for sponsoring today's video. I have been so excited to tell you guys all about them and how much we have truly loved our Hungry Root box. But first I have to give you a backstory because it's just so funny how all of this came to be. But one of my very good friends, actually, she had posted a couple of pictures of her dinners on Instagram and I text her and I'm like, what is this recipe? It looks so good. And she said, it's from my Hungry Root box. And I was like, wait, I think I've seen like a commercial for them, but I'm not sure. And she was like, girl, it is incredible. We've been ordering for a couple of months and we love it. And I was like, I gotta look into this more. Then I started seeing their commercials on TV like a lot. And I was like, funky, I have seen this hungry route everywhere. Like we really need to look into this. Then when they reached out to work with me, I was so excited and y'all, it is so cool. So let me tell you all about them. Hungry Root is a tech-enabled grocery service, which just means that you can shop from their app or their website and get it delivered right to your door and it's personalized to your lifestyle and your taste. I could not believe how much food we received in our box and how many meals this one box covered for us. There were things for breakfast, lunch, snacks, dinner, and dessert. The fresh produce was beautiful and everything was so fresh and much more healthy than what we would normally buy or get eating out. 
B and I were both obsessed from the moment we opened our box. So to get started with Hungry Root, all you do is take this really cool quiz that asks you questions all about your eating habits, flavors you like, health and dietary needs, what foods you don't like, and how many meals per week you are looking for. They want to know what your goals are and how much time you like spending in the kitchen or meal prepping. It's totally tailored to you. So Hungry Root will send you a personalized weekly delivery filled with healthy groceries along with 10 minute recipes and you can edit your weekly deliveries and choose exactly what you'd like to receive or you can let Hungry Root choose for you. When your delivery arrives at your doorstep, you can mix and match the groceries with what's in your fridge or use the easy recipes that they've put together for you. The more you shop and cook with Hungry Root, the more their personalization engine learns what you like. So you can spend less time planning and shopping and cooking and more time just enjoying the food and doing things that you love. And I am so excited for you to try Hungry Root. And I'm even more excited to tell you that they gave us a huge discount. So the first 100 people to use my code Jessica40 will get 40% off your first grocery order with Hungry Root. That is major. So use the link in my description box or go to hungryroot.com and use code Jessica40 to get 40% off. Okay, I still cannot get over that Tuscan chicken mac and cheese because it was so, so good. But I'm equally as excited for this recipe because we are making a 30 minute meal. So 30 minutes in one skillet. This cannot be any more simple and it's going to be a Mexican chicken and rice dish. Y'all already know I'm excited. So let's get started on this one. So I have some chicken tenderloins and I just cut them up into bite sized pieces. You can use chicken breast, whatever you want. And then to this, we're going to add some taco seasoning. Kind of stir that around and get those nice and coated and then we're going to add them to our skillet and cook them all the way through. I've already got this warming up back here so I'm going to add just a little bit of oil and then just toss in your chicken. Okay there are some times when I wish I could ask y'all questions like in real time. <laughs> Like, I wish you guys could answer me whenever I'm filming. I need to do like a live sometime or something. But anyway, I'll look at the recipe and it says for instant rice. Well, I didn't even think about that. And I was like, oh, I have plenty of rice on hand, but this is not instant rice. So, I'm thinking since this is like 10 minute rice, and I think brown rice will be really good with this recipe. I might just use these instead of this. This will probably just take longer to cook. I don't know what to do. I think I'm just going to use this one. Okay, now that this chicken is cooked all the way through, I'm just going to remove it from our skillet. What do we think this is called? Uh, chicken rice taco. No, the pan. Oh, it's a, a brazer. A brazer for my brazer. <laughs> okay, now per Bunky's uh, suggestion, which I think was very good, he said to remove the pan from that heat before we add in our rice and our milk otherwise it's just gonna like sizzle steam burn all the things so I just removed it from heat and then I checked and the box says that this makes about two cups of rice and that's exactly what the recipe calls for so I'm just gonna use my one bag we're gonna add one cup of milk and one cup of salsa and then we're just gonna let that cook mm. until that rice is nice and fluffy mm -hmm. okay I'm adding my rice and then my milk I'm not gonna measure this. I'm just adding in all my salsa here. There's about one cup left in there. Yeah, because anyway. you you've ate all the salsa, Bunky. I'm gonna add a little chicken stock to this. Swish it around, and add it in. Yeah. This rice is just cooking in, in milk only, or milk and salsa. Interesting. I think that's good though, because that milk's gonna make it like so creamy. Milky rice. Milky rice. Give it a stir. Then we're going to bring this to a simmer and then put the lid on so that that rice will cook all the way. Okay, so here's how our rice is looking. It smells so good. And now that it is fully cooked, we're going to add in one can of Rotel. And I'm not even going to drain it. I'm just going to add the whole thing. Because honestly, rice can always use some extra liquid. Okay, hang on. <laughs> it's hard to do one-handed. Okay, Rotel going in. Give that a nice, pretty little stir. And now for the good stuff. You're gonna get some like queso cheese dip and we're gonna add all, well not all of this, we're gonna add a good amount into our skillet. It actually says one cup, so that's almost, I would say this entire container, but not quite all of it. I'd say that's like three fourths of a cup, one cup, why not? 
The more the better. Okay, let all of that melt and get nice and creamy in there. With what little smell I have left, because <laughs> my allergies are still bothering me so bad, this smells amazing. Oh my gosh, now that that cheese is melting, friends. So now all we do is just let this cook for about five minutes. I'm gonna turn up the heat just a little bit because we want to kind of like simmer. And then after the five minutes, we're gonna add our chicken in, add cheese, pop a lid on, let that cheese melt, and this is gonna be done. Like, it could not be any more easy, and you cannot tell me this doesn't look amazing. It reminds me of like ACP. Okay, we've been simmering away for about five minutes. Like, you, you just don't even know. <laughs> like, you absolutely, are gonna wanna make this recipe. Okay, Bunky, you hold my camera for me. Now, where's my cheese? More cheese. More cheese. You actually have more for this. Uh-uh. Yes, okay, so add your layer of cheese. So just kinda like fold, stir that in. Okay, now we're gonna add back in our chicken. Then, we're topping it with more cheese. Gracious. Can you even imagine? Okay, and then we're gonna pop a lid on here. Oh, Let that cheese that, melt. That's just gonna get nice and ooey gooey on the top layer. Yeah. Who's that down there? That's Daisy May. She wants some cheese. You want a piece of cheese, Daisy May? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying that this like reminds me of ACP kind of. Yeah. Like arroz con pollo. I think are, I said it right. Those are the vibes I'm getting. Those are the vibes I'm getting. Like chicken, cheesy rice. Usually a rose comes with um, like tomatoes, onions, peppers in there, so that's like the salsa. Mm -hmm. It is literally oh, like right. deconstructed ACP. Yeah. Which is what I always order whenever we like go out and get Mexican food. Chicken, cheese, and rice. So good. Now I always get the like veggies on the side for a bunkie because I don't want the onions, of course. But I can pick through these tiny onions. There's only a few. Do we just like put this on a plate and eat it? Do we eat it with like chips? Do we eat it with tortillas? No, it's just like a bowl. But I will say. Yeah. I feel like eating it with chips would be so good. I and think I think I might break a chip out and just get a little scoop. And then add a little tapatio. Yeah. And a little sour cream. Mmm. I am your girl, okay? <laughs> okay, for the big reveal. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Now that is a bowl I want to eat, okay? I think the chips idea is like genius. Yeah. You taste test first, B. <laughs> That's delicious. Is it better than ACP? I think so. In my opinion, yes. It has a lot of flavor in there. It really does. Like that salsa, I think I always say this, but it is like cheat code status, man. Which one is it? The, no, the Newman's Own? Yeah, that Newman's Own. Yeah, that's Bunky's favorite. It just really sings throughout the dish. Mmm. <laughs> that's delicious. Yay! This is a winner. Like, y'all have to try this recipe. Mm hmm So good. That is so good. I think having the chips with it is like the way to go. Yes, agreed. Um, do you know what I thought about? What? Just because, I think if you put uh, like a can of drained black beans in here, oh, amazing! I mean, it, it would it would really like make it the whole meal more beefy you know? almost. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, that more would substantial. Be so good, so good. Yeah. Okay, this is one hundred percent a winner. Wow! I just tried it. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's it's real. insane. It is really really good. I just wanted to um, say bonk. I'm so proud of us for <laughs> nearly going through this entire peppercorn grinder. I better refill us. Like, this is an accomplishment. It's taking like a like. year or two to get through it. it. It's like when you have um, an ink pen. Yes. And you actually use the, like the pen just runs out of ink <laughs> on you. Like you feel like. You got your mind as well. I really. I accomplished a lot with this pen. Agreed. I feel like we've accomplished a lot with this pepper grinder. Y'all, I actually cannot get over it. I give this recipe like a 12 out of 10. It was so delicious, full of flavor, cheesy, the rice, the chicken, 
Everything about it was just amazing, so I cannot wait for you to try it. But that is it for today's video. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me in the kitchen. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll try these recipes. Don't forget to check out Hungry Group down below. It's such a great deal for you guys. As always, I'd love for you to subscribe if you're new. Give this one a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.